everyone, I'm Nikhil Reddy. Welcome to the channel. I make videos about personal growth, education, and technology. And today, I wanted to share what I learned in a book called When Breath Becomes Air. It was perhaps one of the best books that I read this year, and it taught me so much about how to go about the next several years of my life. When Paul Kalanithi was diagnosed with terminal cancer in 2013, he was a 36-year-old bent on making big contributions to the world. He was a gifted neurosurgeon resident at Stanford with just months before graduation, and he'd also completed postdoctoral research that won him his field's highest research award. Not only that, but he was a phenomenal writer. With two degrees in English from Stanford, he was clearly a master of two crafts, and his book beautifully bends art and science, emotion and structure, all into an eloquent look at death. Here is what I learned from his tremendous piece. This is a powerful little book, much bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. It's a little about dying, but a lot more about being alive. Paul Kalanithi was, by all accounts, an excellent neurosurgeon, with the potential of being a true guiding force in medicine and science. He spent most of his early adult life seeking knowledge on multiple fronts, from literature and science to philosophy and ethics. When he finally decided to pursue a career in medicine, neurology specifically, he wasn't just content to be a doctor. He wanted to understand and identify with his patients fully, to help them and their families adjust to whatever new reality would be following a diagnosis diagnosis, an accident, or a surgery. As he struggles with thoughts of his future, however long that may be, he ponders how to fill that time. Should he continue working in a field that has so richly given back to him and given him the chance to touch so many lives, or should he pull away and start to confront the unstable idea of death? What gives a life a value, and how can that value be measured, are often questions that Paul deals with very heavily. What obligations does he owe to his family, his friends, his wife, and his infant daughter? Upon reading this book, you mourn a man that you never knew, and you can't help but feel an immense gratitude for the principles and the values that he shared in his final days. Reading about his passage into and through the world of medicine, and about the extent of what he called his moral responsibility to each patient was enlightening. Over the course of seven years, he learned how to become more than just a surgical machine, and invest the time necessary into his patient's care. His book proves to be a great instruction set for developing integrity and humility. Read this book with the knowledge that you may not be always able to understand everything someone goes through, but you can set aside the time to listen to their story and hopefully give them the dignity and respect they deserve as a human being, in life or death. In Paul's own words, human knowledge is never contained in one person. It grows from the relationships we create between each other and the world, and still it is never complete. book is ample testimony that a well-lived life can create immense impact not only in you, but the people around you. And when life gets difficult and you're approaching matters of life and death, it's at these critical junctures that you must ask yourself. It's not about whether to live or to die, but rather what kind of life is worth living in the first place. When Breath Becomes Air is a profoundly intellectual and deeply emotional memoir, and it's also a commentary on what makes life meaningful, what makes life worth living in the first place. And it was an important lesson for me because I often find myself buried in a screen or living in this world of asynchronous communication where we're texting and messaging and not truly living in the present. Instead, Paul flipped the entire concept on its head, and he forces us to enjoy the moments that we have laid out in front of us. Paul spent seven years adhering to this plan. He had carved out an entire life for himself, and all of a sudden, a sudden health concern and diagnosis left him wondering, what's the purpose of all of this? And as he comes to the end of his book, that's a question that's answered not only by living together in the present with his wife and infant daughter, but learning to pull beauty and positivity out of the smallest of moments. Ultimately, I hope this short review of Paul's piece proves how much we can learn and pull away from the books we read, but also offers a short lesson on the importance of going out and appreciating the present, the moments that are laid out before you and not always adhering to a plan that's five, six, seven, eight, maybe even 10 years into the future. And with that, I will leave you guys. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Nikhil. I make videos like this all the time. If you enjoyed, please let me know down below with a like or a comment, maybe 
a subscription to the channel. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram where I am also very active, or you can go check out my storefront where I'm selling journals, sweatshirts, hats, and a lot more if that's your thing. Last but certainly not least, I will always see you guys in the next one.